As a metric space, Hilbert space can be considered an infinite dimensional linear topological space. And important questions related to its topological properties were raised since the early 1900s. In this context, Hilbert space played a role in the development of quantum mechanics, and it has continued to be an important mathematical tool in applied mathematics and mathematical physics. The term Hilbert space is often reserved for an infinite dimensional inner product space, having the property that it is complete or closed. However, the term is often used nowadays in a way that includes finite dimensional spaces, which automatically satisfy the condition of completeness. A Hilbert space is a mathematical concept covering the extra-dimensional use of Euclidean space. That is a space with more than three dimensions. Named after David Hilbert, the Hilbert space uses the mathematics of two and three dimensions to try and describe what happens in greater than three dimensions. Vector algebra and calculus are methods normally used in the two-dimensional Euclidean plane and three-dimensional space. In Hilbert spaces, these methods can be used with any finite or infinite number of dimensions. A Hilbert space is a vector space that has the structure of an inner product that allows length and angle to be measured. Hilbert spaces also have to be complete, which means that enough limits have to exist for calculus to work. A Hilbert space usually serves as the state space of a quantum system. It is defined based on the notion of vector space and generalizes the notion of Euclidean space. It extends the methods of vector algebra and calculus from the two-dimensional Euclidean plane and three-dimensional space to spaces with any finite or infinite number of dimensions. Simply put, for those who are not familiar with such spaces, all they need to know is that a Hilbert space is a generalization of the Euclidean space, but allowing for infinite dimensions. Let me start with an observation of Feynman's from 1980. I think it was about 1980. He asked himself, why is it so hard to solve quantum mechanical problems? What he meant by that is, why is it so hard to simulate them on a classical computer? And his answer, this is a quote, a direct quote, because Hilbert space is so damn big. Let me give an example. There are many systems which can be described by bits. Bits are just bits of information, like inside your computer. A state of such a system is typically described by a string of zeros and ones. There are physical systems like this. In fact, every physical system can, uh, can probably be brought to a description like this. So a state of the system is just a string of zeros and ones. Supposing there are a thousand bits. Well, if there are a thousand bits, you can get, you can write down the configuration, just n binary digits. You can write them on about a page. Okay, so not too bad. On the other hand, take the same systems, but think of them as quantum mechanical. Quantum mechanical qubits. Qubits are quantum mechanical bits. What you can do with qubits is you can superpose states, quantum mechanically superpose states. I assume you all know what that is. You can quantum mechanically superimpose the states, and you have to superimpose them with complex coefficients. How many quantum complex coefficients does it take? Well, there are two to the n configurations of these uh, bits. So it takes two to the n complex numbers to describe the quantum mechanical analog of the bit string. Two to the n complex numbers would be so large that if you had just 400 qubits, you could not fit the entire description of the state of that system into the entire known universe, even if you packed it at Planckian density with zeros and ones. Quantum states are typically exponentially complex in some sense. This, the term complexity has a technical meaning, but for our purposes, it just means hard to describe for now. Now, another issue. Why is quantum mechanics so hard to understand? This is not the issue of why it's hard to, to, um, to compute. It's a question of why it's hard to understand. The thing which is most peculiar about quantum mechanics is entanglement. I'm not going to describe entanglement to you any more than just to say it's a funny situation in which you can have a pair of systems which are not connected in any way, but in which you can know 
everything that can be known about the combination of both of them and know nothing about either of them. Now, if that blows you away, it should. And it's what made Einstein very uncomfortable with the concept. Einstein, Rosen, Podolsky, entanglement. And uh, it is what made Feynman say, nobody really understands quantum mechanics, which, by which he meant nobody can really get their head around this concept of entanglement. Again, I'm not going to describe it. I'm just going to assume you know a little bit about it. Now, when you take the two together, the enormous complexity, which makes it so hard to describe quantum states, and you add entanglement, you discover that entanglement becomes a useful way to think about navigating your way through the huge Hilbert space.